Welcome to the Travel Guide of Peru. Travelers flock to Peru to hike the famous Inca Trail, explore the lush jungles, and devour their way through the incredible food scene of Lima. But while the Inca Trail and Machu Picchu attract the majority of the attention, 2,500 people visit Machu Picchu every day, there is much more to see and do in Peru if you're willing to get out there and explore. Nestled high in the slopes of the Andes, the ruins of Machu Picchu continue to reveal the mysteries of the Inca Empire. While the archaeological site draws scores of visitors to Peru annually, here are 10 lesser-known secrets hidden beneath its layers of history. When the explorer Hiram Bingham III encountered Machu Picchu in 1911, he was looking for a different city, known as Vilcabamba. This was a hidden capital to which the Inca had escaped after the Spanish conquistadors arrived in 1532. Over time it became famous as the legendary lost city of the Inca. Bingham spent most of his life arguing that Machu Picchu and Vilcabamba were one and the same, a theory that wasn't proved wrong until after his death in 1956. The stones in the most handsome buildings throughout the Inca Empire used no mortar. These stones were cut so precisely, and wedged so closely together, that a credit card cannot be inserted between them. Aside from the obvious aesthetic benefits of this building style, there are engineering advantages. Peru is a seismically unstable country and Machu Picchu itself was constructed atop two fault lines. Both Lima and Cusco have been leveled by earthquakes. When an earthquake occurs, the stones in an Inca building are said to dance, that is, they bounce through the tremors and then fall back into place. Without this building method, many of the best known buildings at Machu Picchu would have collapsed long ago. The Sacsayhuaman, also Sacsayhuaman or Saxaman, meaning Royal Eagle, Fortress Temple Complex lies at the northern edge of the former Inca capital Cusco. Constructed during the reign of Pachacuti, 1438 to 1471 Common Era, and his successors, its massive, well-built walls remain today as a testimony not only to Inca power but also the skills of Inca architects and their approach of blending their monumental structures harmoniously into the natural landscape. The Sacsayhuaman is still used today for reenactments of Inca-inspired ceremonies. The fortress was the largest structure built by the Incas. It was constructed on an elevated rocky promontory facing the northern marshy ground outside the Inca capital of Cusco. Pottery finds indicate that the site had previously been occupied by Inca residents. Begun in the reign of the great Inca Empire builder Pachacuti Inca Yupanqui, or perhaps his son Thapa Inca Yupanqui in the mid-15th century CE, the design was credited to four architects, Hualpa Ramachi, Maraconqui, Akawana, and Kala Country. The first structures were made using only mud and clay. Subsequent rulers then replaced these with magnificent stonework which employed huge finely cut polygonal blocks, many over 4 meters in height and weighing over 100 tons. To complete such a massive project 20,000 laborers were drafted in under the well-established Inca system of extracting both goods and labor from peoples they conquered. Working in a system of rotation 6,000 were given quarrying duties while the other 4,000 dug trenches, and laid the foundations. Miraflores is an upscale suburban district of Lima located about 10 kilometers from the central city. One of the first areas to be settled by the Spanish after Lima was founded, Miraflores has a long and varied history. It was the site of an important battle between Chile and Peru during the War of the Pacific, for which it gets its nickname of Heroic City. Otherwise, Miraflores was known only as a sleepy beachfront resort town for most of the 19th century. However, as the city of Lima continued to grow, Miraflores was eventually absorbed into the larger urban area and became one of the city's most important districts. Today, Miraflores is probably the most popular district in Lima from a tourist perspective, featuring gorgeous coastal views, quality shopping, and world-class food. If you're planning to visit Lima, chances are you'll be spending plenty of time in Miraflores. There are endless ways to enjoy this wonderful district. The coastal cliffs of Miraflores offer excellent conditions for paragliding. Miraflores boasts two surfer-friendly beaches, Maca Beach and Waikiki Beach. Both beaches are said to be good for beginners. Parque Kennedy is the main park for the district and its most central meeting point. The majority of the bars, restaurants, and hotels of Miraflores are located within close proximity.
The great Inca Empire has not died, it lives in each wall and stone palace of the city of Cusco, which coexists with the impressive viceregal architecture. Beyond its impressive attractions that transport you to the past such as Machu Picchu, Huayna Picchu, Sacsayhuaman or Ollantaytambo, Cusco has, in the heart of its city, a unique charm due to the diversity of options it offers the traveler for sightseeing and entertainment. In the historic center, everything is close, everything is safe and ends up being the starting point for an amazing adventure. The first thing you should do to start your journey is to get to the Plaza de Armas, which is located in the historic center of Cusco. This is quite simple since the Alejandro Velasco Estete International Airport is quite close. Just take a taxi, which will travel no more than 6 kilometers about 15 to 20 minutes depending on traffic. Once you are here, admire the beautiful colonial balconies that contrast very well with the cobbled areas of the sidewalk, roadway and even buildings. After settling in your lodging the hotel and gastronomic offer in the historic center is quite varied, complying with the highest quality standards, begin to take your first adventurous steps in the Plaza de Armas, where you will be able to discover an endless number of tourist attractions. The first thing that will catch your attention is the Cathedral Basilica of the Virgin of Asuncion. This Catholic temple was built in 1560, on the Royal Palace of the Inca Huayracocha. Currently, it houses the Diocese of Cusco, and is considered the most important Catholic religious monument in the historic center, due to its enviable Baroque-style colonial architecture. An unforgettable tour is a visit to Hatch and Rumiog Street, where handicraft shops abound. However, its greatest artistic attraction is not for sale, it is the famous 12-angled stone, visible and patient to all passers-by, which amazes with its perfect finish and polish. This space is part of a huge wall that belonged to the Palace of Inca Roca. If you want to delve a little into the search for handicrafts, visit the San Blas neighborhood, known for being the cradle of Cusco artisans. Humante Lake is named after the nearby 5,473 meters tall mountain Humante, and is considered one of the most beautiful and sacred lakes in Cusco. To get to Humante Lake from the city of Cusco, you must travel about 120 kilometers by road, passing through the towns of Limatambo and Malapata, until you reach the community of Soripampa. In Humante Lake a thousand-year-old ceremony is held in honor of Pachamama, Mother Earth. Once you arrive at the lake, you can participate in the ceremony by placing stones to express your gratitude for arriving at the lake safe and sound. The story of Humante Lake is the legend of two brothers, whose names are Salkantai and Ozangate. It is said that both brothers decided to undertake a journey to unknown lands in order to obtain food and put an end to the famine of their people. In the vicinity of the snowy territory, just three minutes from the lake, there is an eco-camp where you can enjoy the magical experience of witnessing the sunrise and sunset, and you will have time to explore the most fascinating corners of the Peruvian highlands. The sacred valley of the Incas or Urubamba Valley in the Andes is the place of birth of the Incas civilization. Due to its special geographical qualities, the valley boasts exceptional fertility and a good climate even when other regions of modern Peru are suffering from long-standing droughts. Researchers believe that this easy supply of agricultural provisions enabled the Incas to free part of the population from farming, and in the 11th century they began occupation of nearby territories, and established the great Inca Empire to Wantansuyu. Amazing agricultural terraces mostly consist of several enormous circular depressions. The complex is located on a plateau at about 3,500 meters, 11,482.94 feet, above sea level. More amazing agricultural terraces mostly consist of several enormous circular depressions. The complex is located on a plateau at about 3,500 meters, 11,482.94 feet, above sea level. Each level of terraces has its own microclimate, the temperature and wind force of terraces are different. The difference between the lowest and highest levels is equal to the difference between sea level temperature at 1,000 meters, 2,380.8 feet, height level temperature. Maras Town is well known for its nearby salt evaporation ponds, in use since Inca times. The highly salty water emerges at a spring, a natural outlet of an underground stream. The water is allowed to stand in the pond, where it will evaporate leaving the salt behind. 
The ponds are filled then allowed to evaporate several times to allow enough quantity of salt to accumulate. Bunacanca is the geographical name of the of stunning rainbow mountain off Peru. It is an incredible and colorful rock formation of the Andes mountain range that is located at 5,200 meters above sea level on the majestic Ozangate Glacier, about 60 miles southeast of the city of Cusco. Commonly called the Rainbow Mountain, Montaña Arcoiris, or the Seven Colors Mountain, Montaña de Siete Colores, thanks to its seven rainbow shades. It can be seen in all its beauty, and looks like a huge watercolor painting. The colors of this natural beauty are a result of the composition of minerals that have deposited on mountain walls over the course of the millennia. Following the collision of the tectonic plates, a quantity of materials such as copper, iron, hematite and sulfur overlap to create the colorful mountain that we can admire today. This beautiful landscape was buried for a long time by a thick layer of ice and came to light only 40 years ago with rising temperatures when snow began to melt, uncovering a completely new landscape. Arequipa is a serene metropolis blessed with a pleasant climate and eternal sunshine. Among its many treasures are photogenic plazas lined by palm trees, colonial-era architecture that have earned the city its UNESCO World Heritage title, and regional dishes. As you wander the cobblestone streets, you'll quickly see why Arequipa is called the White City or Ciudad Blanca. CR is petrified ash from decades worth of volcanic eruptions. Used as the primary building material for Arequipa's churches and mansions, it bestows the city with a radiant appearance. Situated beneath the towering gaze of the misty volcano, and within easy reach of one of the world's deepest canyons, Calca, home of the majestic Condor, Peru's second most populous city possesses thrills and attractions to suit all tastes. Among the urban centers of the southern Andes, Arequipa is undoubtedly the most attractive and a must-see for any traveler on a trip to Peru. Chocacuarao Peru is considered the jewel of the Andes and one of the most incredible Inca settlements. The remote hike required to reach Chocacuarao is one of Peru's more moderate treks, but the amazing Chocacuarao ruins at the end are more than worth it. On this trek, you'll visit the semi-tropical Andean forests, an experience leaving the Andean Altiplano towards the high jungle, and eventually reach the incredible Chocacuarao ruins. Thanks to its isolation, which requires a full two days hike to reach, the site receives a fraction of the visitors that visit Machu Picchu. Usually, there's not another soul on site. However, around 8,000 people visit annually, compared to the almost 1 million visitors that arrive at Machu Picchu each year. Passing by the Huaca del Sol on the road to the Moche Valley, one's first impulse is to mistake it for a huge hilly mound. Then, slowly, the eye picks out individual bricks from the sand, and the realization dawns, this thing is man-made. Finally, the gray slopes of Cerro Blanco heave into view, and with them the crumbling walls of the Huaca de la Luna, shaded by protective awnings. This is the smaller but more interesting of the two pyramids. It's a scene of harshness, due to the site's extreme decay. But it's nothing compared to the strangeness inside. There are two structures remaining at what once was the Moche capital. The Huaca del Sol, or Temple of the Sun, is bigger, but paradoxically less impressive. Meanwhile, the smaller Huaca de la Luna, or Temple of the Moon, is for most visitors deathly fascinating. The Huaca del Sol is situated on the western end below the city's tutelary mountain. Time and human vandalism have done their worst, rendering it almost unrecognizable. At one point, it stood 160 feet high, with a summit platform in the shape of a cross and some 140 million bricks constituting its multiple layers. However, in 1602, the Spanish diverted the Moche River to wash out the gold from the tombs inside, destroying two-thirds of the pyramid in the process. Today, what was once the largest monumental structure in the Americas is a mere shell of its former self, and closed to the public too. The Huaca de la Luna, meanwhile, is a labyrinth of surprises. Standing 105 feet tall, and composed of some 50 million adobe bricks, it was built at roughly the same time as the Huaca del Sol and is oriented around two main platforms. These two platforms are linked by a maze of plazas, ramps and terraces. The Huaca was built over six successive centuries and generations, with each expanding on and completely covering the previous structure. Kulap 
A fortified city on top of a mountain, is one of the most impressive and significant pre-Columbian ruins in all of South America, perhaps only matched in grandeur by Machu Picchu. And yet, for the time being, it still receives only a fraction of the visitors that go by train or make the trek to Machu Picchu, despite the inauguration of a cable car, the first in Peru, to the site in 2017. This travels from the town of Tingo Nuevo, covering 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles, and rising 661 meters, 2,169 feet, up to an area near the Kulap ruins. NB. Until then, this journey had been done either on a spectacular, but hair-raising, mountain road, taking an hour and a half, or by a strenuous four to five hour hike of 10 kilometers, six miles. This is the largest and most important Chachapoya site, beautifully located at about 3,000 meters, 10,000 feet, on a craggy mountaintop overlooking the Utcabamba River Valley, giving superb views. The wet, cloud forest at this elevation supports a rich growth of bromeliads and orchids, which plaster the walls of the site. Most of the site was constructed from AD 900 to 1100, although some remnants near the main entrance have been carbon dated to the 6th century AD. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and find it informative. Please do not forget to subscribe, like and share our videos.